Hey guys, this is uh, the Dr. Long's review guide. Uh, question eight. So we have an E. coli plasma membrane, and it's composed of 75% of protein, 25% of lipid by weight, and we want to find out what the ratio of protein to lipid is. So we're trying to figure out what the the total number of proteins to the no total number of lipids is. Uh, so we have by weight, 75% protein. Let's go down all of our data. and 25% lipid. So by weight, we have a ratio of three to one of protein to lipid. Now the average weight of each protein is 50,000 units, those proteins, and uh, same, so for lipids, it's 750. So you see what I'm doing is I'm taking the, the ratio, the ratio of the of the weights and dividing it by the average weight of each molecule and that should give us the total number of molecules okay so if you you do all this math out you get a ratio of 0 0.045 I'll plug it in your calculator if you don't believe me so we have that many proteins two lipids uh, you take the inverse of this so this is protein to lipids we want to get lipids to proteins just do one divided by this number and we get about 22.2 lipids per protein, for every protein, lipids to protein. All right, so this is the first part of the question. The second question, uh, so we're assuming there's an average molecular weight of 125 for each amino acid, and we want to know the average number of amino acids per protein. Okay, so we have the average weight of a protein, which is 50,000. Right, and we want to divide that, or we take 125, no, sorry, mix that up. So we have 50,000, so that's the total amount of the protein, right? And we want to have this many amino acids, or this is the total weight of amino acids. So if we take the total weight of the protein, divide it by the weight of the average amino acid, we should get the number of amino acids per protein. All right, and this should come out to, let me see what I got. Uh, I get 400, 400 amino acids. Okay, now the last part of the question is going to ask, um, so if we have half of these amino acids are hydrophobic, right, so half of this, we have 200 amino acids over here. Um, so if those are hydrophobic, how many times can this protein cross uh, the lipid bilayer? Well, if the lipid bilayer is 30 angstroms. All right, so we have this, this lipid bilayer, right, and we have all these these helices going through it, we would, and this is 30 angstroms. Okay, so we know how many amino acids we have, and we know how far this has to go. One thing that we, we have to remember from our notes, and it's something you, you need to have memorized, is that in a, in a transmembrane helix, every amino acid is going to add 1.5 angstroms. Okay, so let me write that down, 1.5 angstroms per amino acid. That means that if we have 30 angstroms, a 30 angstrom transmembrane, uh, or 30 angstrom bilayer, we would have 30 angstroms divided by 1.5 angstrom per amino acid. So the angstroms cancel out the one, we have one over one amino acid. That's going to give us amino acids. So then this, uh, you see our, our units work out and we should get 30 divided by 1.5, that's 20, 20 amino acids. So it's going to take 20 amino acids for each hydrophobic region for one transmembrane, one transmem transmembrane helix. Sorry. Uh, so we have 20 amino acids per helix, so we have 200 amino acids total. So if we take 200, divide this by 20, we should get we have a total of 10 helices across the membrane. And that is how you do problem 8.